taking the time to fill out those connection cards. We really appreciate it. For right now, you can stick them in the pocket of the seat in front of you, and we'll engage those at the end of the message. So good morning. Good Happy morning. Memorial Day weekend. The sun is out in central New York. Woo! <laughs> you know, Memorial Day can either be one of those days that's really great, or it can be one of those days that is boring and cold like we had around this week. My name is Chris Borrell, and if you don't know me, I'm the site pastor out here at our Auburn site of the Vineyard Church. And I'm glad to have this opportunity to share with you guys today. Uh, John Elmer, who usually speaks to us via the screen, he's taken a little break today, and he'll be back at it again next week with a new series. So I hope you'll all be with us for that. All right, I want to get started by, um, by just telling you about a funny thing that I did when I was a kid. Now, you know, if you've ever heard any kind of a race, they always say, on your mark. Get ready, get set, go, or they have a bullhorn, or they have some kind of a whistle, or whatever they do. Well, when I was a teenager, um, a young teen like in my early high school years, I participated on a swim team. I don't know what I was thinking, but I participated <laughs> on a swim team. And I would go on that swim team, and every time I would get up, I would get on the side of the, you know, on the side of the pool there, and I'd get ready, you know how they, they go like this. Anyway, that's what I was trying to do. And they'd say, on your mark, get ready, get set, go. And I would dive in the pool, and I would swim as fast as I could, as fast as I could. And then about three quarters of the way across, I really remember that I can't see anything without my glasses. <laughs> and I would have this panic that I wasn't going to find the wall. You know, you got to swim up to the wall, and then you do this really cool flip, and then you swim back the other way. Well, that's what I would try to do. Only, I would either bang into the wall, or I would flip too early because I couldn't find it, and I'd come back and race all the way back, and guess what? I never won. <laughs> I mean, like, I was never on that podium. When they handed out first, second um, place, it was never me. And every time I went back to do this, I did the exact same thing. Like, I think they say the definition of insanity <laughs> is doing the same thing over and over and over again, but expecting different results. Now, if I had taken the time to examine and think about what it was that I'd been doing and think about how it went, what a novel idea, huh? Like, how did that race go? What did I do? What could I do to improve? Never thought of that. But if I had, I might have realized that the diving team was a better place for me. I love to climb up high on that high, t on that high jump thing and dive off of that and do all kinds of crazy dives. And guess what? I could see the water. I mean, like, it wasn't too hard to miss the water. I did that thing <laughs> about landing on the ground. But I never examined it. And when I would get to the end of that race, you know what? I realized I felt like I was drowning. I did not like being on the swim team, but I kept trying and trying because I never examined where I was going. So get ready, set, go. One, two, three, right? So how do we apply that, and what does that have to do with today and Memorial Day? Well, I think it has some serious implications for us. I think most of us are a little smarter than I was when I was on the swim team, and most of us can kind of think about where we've been, but I think in order for us to really figure out what's best and go forward and to keep growing, the first thing we have to do to get ready is to look back. Paul says this uh, in this little phrase, in this little passage, you know the passage that, that everybody uses when they get married? You know, they talk about all the things that they'll never be able to fulfill. Love is kind, love is patient. <laughs> Love is all these great things. It's God's love, not our love. We really got to pray to be able to do those things. <laughs> but in the end of that passage where God's talking about all the spiritual gifts, and then he talks about love and what it really looks like, he says this. He says, when I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. And now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. And what I know is partial and incomplete. But then I 
he'll know everything completely, just as God knows me completely. So Paul says, you've got to look back. You know, when I was a child, I spoke and thought like a child. That's what I did. That's who I was. You know, every year that we progress, we can look back and see where we've come from and see what we were made of. I don't care if you're 10 or you're 12 or 11 or 8. You can still look back and say, hey, this is where I've been this past year, but look at where I can go this coming year. So we need to look back. I think Memorial Day is, a, is really an important time to do that because when we look at Memorial Day, it's kind of the last push before summer, isn't it? Like most of the people I know, this weekend they're going to be planting their gardens and putting their flowers out because supposedly the last frost won't come until after June 1st. So this is the time where we're kind of reflecting. We've been working hard all year long, or we've been in school all year long, and we're thinking, man, I am so glad the summer is here. Finally, warm weather, the beach, swimming, picnics, you know, doing all those things that I enjoy, going on vacation. I think at Memorial Day, we start to look at those kinds of things. But what I'd like to challenge us to do today is to look back at where we've been and kind of assess that and look forward and see where we want to grow and then do something to challenge ourselves over the summer to grow. You know, as a church, um, I think this is a great time of year for us to do that. And since it's my turn to speak and John's not speaking, I want to share a little bit just for us at the Auburn site. Four years ago, we started sowing seeds in this area. We started really uh, looking and trying this crazy idea. Okay, so I was 56 years old. I'm 60 now. Just in case you can't do the math, I can do it really well. <laughs> it's coming sooner than I'd like to think. So, But four years ago, we started sowing seeds. We started a little small group out at Diane's down that time. And we started going to the graves like we're doing tomorrow and giving things away free just to say, hey, you know what? God loves you. Like, we're not going to come and talk to you and really do a hard push, but we're going to give you some things free just to let you know that that's the kind of God we serve. And then we started working really hard. And do you know why we did this? We did this because we had this crazy, crazy vision. And the craziest vision part came from me because I was the most untechnical person. Ask those guys in the tech booth. They never want me back there because I don't know what I'm doing. But we decided in this part of the country where it has never been done before, is it possible, we ask, that God could use technology and bring people close to him and bring people into connection with him? Could we develop a whole community of faith built around this idea of technology and doing a video on the screen for the sermon and having everything else here live, our worship band, our kids' ministry, our hospitality. Could we do those things? Do you think that could work? And as a pastoral staff, we really thought about that. And the first time I heard it, I said, no, John, I think you need the wrong thing for lunch. <laughs> Nobody's going to go to church and watch a TV. <laughs> but then it started to grab a hold of me. And I think that God started to grab a hold of me. And I started thinking, what if this could possibly happen? Like, I'm 56 years old, could I give the next best of my career time and see if we could develop something that would outlive me, that would raise up new people, give new people opportunities for leadership, people opportunities for ministry, and do this exciting thing in Auburn, because even though there's a lot of great churches in Auburn, I don't think there's a church like Vineyard here until we came. John has a very good way of engaging and teaching and making things practical. And the whole idea of what we base this church on, of kind of come as you are and be loved, we've worked really hard to work at. We make sure, I mean, everything that we do is intentional. I know it doesn't work that way. It's not supposed to. Everything we do is intentional because we want to communicate God's love to a group of people who don't know him yet. There's a lot of people I mean, you know your friends, you know your co-workers, your classmates. Lots of people have no 
no relationship with Jesus, and they've never had really an opportunity to go and be able to function and meet him and find a church family and be part of a real true community. Even families today are falling apart more than ever, and people and their families don't even have strong community ties. So we wanted to take and see if God would use this kind of crazy technique and technology, and would we be able to help people connect with Jesus and then grow in their relationship with Jesus and in their ability to be able to be in community? Could we do this and help them discover their gifts, you know, serve in the way that God wired them to serve and things that they're passionate about and in ways that suit their personality and can they stretch all of us to be able to grow a community of faith where people would feel comfortable walking in the door because we were making coffee for them and fruit and donuts and they could bring it into the sanctuary and their kids would have awesome time playing and learning and having fun in kids ministry. So we looked back. We looked at the things that, that we do the best at the vineyard, um, and we started putting those things into place here, and we committed ourselves, and I'm going to tell you, there was a group of us, there were about 45 of us that came from the Syracuse site, and we painted walls. I mean, I was on a ladder. You could figure that out. We painted doors. We worked so hard to get this thing done. We had a great band. We opened the doors.
Christ. Then we go out to all the graves that we can think of, and we just hand stuff away. I'm telling you, it is such a blast. It would be really scary if we did it by ourselves. Right? Like, but we go out together, and we have this bag of stuff, and, and tomorrow morning at the, at the parade, we'll be saying to people, hey, look, we're giving away free water. It's waiting for us at Wegmans. We're just going to pick it up cold and start packing it out, just giving out free water. We have sunscreen and lollipops and bubbles and all kinds of things. And we don't even say, hey, we want you to become Christian. We don't say that. We're just in a very low-key, natural way, trying to demonstrate God's love because he gives us so much free. We want to give away things free. We want people to understand that the church is not always demanding our money. Not that it's wrong to give. <laughs> Let me just make that clear. <laughs> but we want people to know that they can have lots of uh, we're going to be going out uh, on the 4th of July or the 3rd, I think it is. A group of us are going to go out. Whoever wants to come, we're going to go out to hear the symphony and see the fireworks out at Emerson Park. It is a blast. We have so much fun. It's got something for everybody. Very family-centered. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We listen to the music. We give things away. We watch the fireworks. And we have a great celebration together. We also have done that big birthday party that we do every year. We are going to be having our fourth birthday party this year. Can you believe it? And so we're going to put on a big event in the parking lot and uh, have all kinds of games and things for kids and good food and all kinds of fun for us to participate and celebrate and in purpose being to invite our friends to church that day for this fun event so that the people that we know who don't know can be invited to come and participate and be part of the family and have fun for that day. Everything is geared around that on, on that day. Uh, then, um, we started, as we started, more things started coming. Little things throughout the years have kind of popped into place. Chris Otis came and we started an alpha program. And Al and Diana have started the financial and my, uh, Scott and Mary started a marriage program. And we rotate these around and say, what are the things that we need that will help us grow? So we look back, and then we look forward to see what's next. What is the next thing that God wants for us to do? Let's brainstorm it and come up with the craziest ideas, and then look forward. Imagine and create. What would it be like in five years if we were what would be different today when you walk through the door? What would be the things that would attract more and more people to come in and connect with Jesus? We've got to brainstorm those things together and figure those things together. And uh, no idea is too crazy. You know, I remember when I was part of the Syracuse site, I've been in this church for 20 years now. And I remember at the Syracuse site when I first started working, John's younger than I am. It's not too hard to believe it. Uh, everybody's younger than I am, practically. <laughs> John is younger than I am. And he was like, he was like 33 and I was 40. And, I came out of and he had the most beautiful idea. And I always said, oh my gosh, somebody's got to be the voice of reason to this guy. He just doesn't get it. I'm going to help him get these things. So uh, I would, he started doing this thing called March for Jesus. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, yeah. So he started this in central New York. It didn't exist. And so there are places all over the world that have this march, and they would come out, and they would sing songs and give stuff away. And uh, it was just a time to praise and praise throughout the streets of Syracuse. And so John called. We were a church. I don't think we were maybe even this big at that point. You know, now we're about 150 people. And at that time, maybe we were like 100. And we decided we were going to do this. I would go to these meetings. John had, had called uh, the pastor to come and be part of it. So I would go and sit at those meetings for this sole purpose. I didn't think John remembered everything that he was signing up to do. He offered his credit card. He, I mean, like, he was crazy. He did all these crazy things because he wanted to get ready, get set, go, take that risk, and see how much impact there could be in the community. So I would go along and I would down at the table with a little piece of paper and I would keep track of everything he was saying. 
And when we left, I would say to him, John, do you realize that you just offered to do X, Y, Z, and pay for it? <laughs> Are you crazy? But you know what? He was. He was crazy. But we got out there that day, and I don't even remember how many churches there were today, all singing together, all marching down the street, waving our banners and balloons and whatever, and praising God. And we did things like that over and over again. We stretched ourselves so far. We did this egg hunt. The church was about 150 people. We pulled off an egg hunt every year for 1,500 people. I mean, can you imagine? I don't think there was anybody that wasn't serving in some capacity that day. Because we were determined that together, we were going to help Central New York know that Jesus cares about them, that he loves them, that they can have a relationship with him, and we would help them to grow in him. And so that's what we've done. Paul says this about looking forward. He says, I know now, all that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely. You know, it's like looking in the bottom of a frying pan. I can look back, and the farther ahead, the farther forward I am, the clearer vision I have to look back, right? Like, when I was swimming on that swim team, I had no idea how stupid that was. You know, really. I never thought about it. But I can, all these years later, stand back and say, wow, I could have done something different. Could have had a V8. You know? <laughs> uh, and we, hindsight is always better. But when we're in the present, we can't quite see the present. Because it's, we can't quite analyze it and figure it out. But we do our best. You know, we filled out that survey a few weeks ago about how we were doing as a church. And, and we try to find out how things are going, and we measure and all that kind of thing. Um, but when we look at the present, it is a little bit like looking at the bottom of a silver frying pan. You don't, it's not like looking in the mirror. Do you know what I mean? And that's what Paul was trying to say here. He was saying, we can't see clearly right now. But on that day, in the future, we're going to be known completely by God, and we're going to know Him completely. And so we looked forward now, instead of looking at the present, and say, what would it be like in five years if I grew and I continued to grow, and we grow as a church, and we continue to grow? Do you know that in this church, like we, it'll be four years, Ninety-nine people have come to Jesus and opened their hearts to him for the first time right here. In some capacity or other, they have begun to engage with Jesus and open their hearts to him and live in a different way. That is an amazing thing. Do you think that's worth working hard for? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's just an amazing thing to work hard for. When we get to heaven, there are going to be people that are there that are going to say, thank you for having that crazy idea about seeing if God would work through technology. Thanks for doing that. We're so glad that you did because we're here today. Because we invited our friends. We took people that we knew who weren't part of community in another church, and we invited them to come along with us and to go forward with us. So I think we look forward. So that's the one. Get ready. The get step, before we jump into going forward, is that we have to look up. We can come up with some really zany ideas. But we've got to look up and say, God, what are the ideas you want us to have? What are the things that you're calling us to in the next five years as the Auburn site. How can we invent new ways to connect with people? Culture keeps changing. How do we change with culture and keep going? You know, personal is asking God, here I am at this great time of summer planning. If I just stagnate, I won't grow. You know, there's, there's a truth about living. 
Living things grow or die. Got a choice, one or the other, right? So we got to keep growing. If you don't, you know, use your brain, you're going to lose it. If you don't use your body, you're going to lose it. Um, so we have to keep growing and pressing forward to grow. How does God want us to grow? How does He want you to grow personally in your life this summer? I have a, a grandchild, and um, she's a little bit young for her class, but she's kind of struggled academically. And, um, you know, the summer would come, and she'd go back in the fall, and she'd not be here, she'd be down here again. And so they made some simple suggestions. Hey, help her do some reading over the summer. You know, ask her some of these spelling words read to you over the summer. Help her to stay on par and keep growing. And you know what? She did. I mean, she kept growing, and now she's doing great. We don't want to stagnate over the summer. We want to keep growing. So you want to rest and refresh and relax and do all those things. They're all wonderful things that you need to do. But find a way that God wants you to grow. Ask him. Look up. Jesus, show us. Show us this summer when we do those summer barbecues in July. We offer a free barbecue right after the service. God, who do you want me to invite to church? Who do you want me to come to come with me from my neighborhood, or where I work, or um, the person that really needs you out there? There's plenty of good churches. But who do you want me to invite to this crazy idea of the vineyard that where they do this? Remember last summer, we were having some problems. It didn't go so well with me. But we really have worked hard to get that video into a place and get the quality that we want and to get it as good as we can get it. Because we are determined that we want people to connect with Jesus. When Paul looks at that, he, sa he says, God knows me completely. God knows us. He has plans for he has some things that he wants to do through us. There was this prophet in the Old Testament, Jeremiah, and he was, uh, he actually had a little bit of my personality, you know, the melancholy, the glass is always empty, it's going to have full, you know, he was a little bit like that. In fact, he wrote a book that's called Lamentation. <laughs> so Jeremiah and I kind of have something going here. And he would tell people the words that he felt like God was giving him to tell them. And one of the things that Jeremiah said was this. Well, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. God has a future and a hope for each one of us that's here today. And you know what? He has a future and a hope for this church. In God's plan, we're going to continue to grow, and we will connect with people in the Auburn, Senate, Jordan, Elbridge, Reedsport area, Fort Byron. We'll just continue to grow by inviting people who may not be comfortable in anybody else's church. Because God's called them to be here. We want to keep growing. We want to keep putting the poker in the fire and finding out what it is We can make a difference in the landscape of Auburn. We can. One person at a time. As we invite people who need to connect with Jesus, that the principles that, that are in this book, that these principles will help their lives be better, that we can help them discover what's in here. Whether they believe in Jesus or not, they can discover that the truths that are written in these pages are the ones that are going to change their lives completely. <coughs> and we'll ask God to come and bring the Holy Spirit and do work in all of our lives to help all of us connect with Him in new ways and keep growing and keep advancing. So for you this summer, <coughs> what is it that God's asking you to grow in? How are some practical, practical things that you can say, this is what I'm going to do this summer. This winter, I decided that I was going to grow and change as a leader. And 
and I started taking some courses to help me do that. So I got a leadership coach, um, Chas Parker, who used to be at the rescue mission. Uh, I asked him to come in and do some coaching with me so I could improve my leadership skills. All right, let's get on this. Still working on it. <laughs> there's a future, there's a hope. <laughs> and I started taking some classes to learn how do we lead for results? How do we connect more people to God? What are the ways and the things we need to do to grow? I made a plan, and I'm following the plan. Let's make a plan together for the summer. Let's make individual plans on how you individually are going to grow to be all that God wants you to grow to be. And how to make plans as a church. What are some things that we do that we can do Joshua, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, um, has this, it's in the beginning of Joshua. And when I read this verse several years ago, I felt like God was like speaking these words right to me. And I want to speak them to all of us right now. Joshua said this from God. This is my command. Be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God
and you have a life full of good things for them. And I thank you, Jesus, that you have the same for this church. I thank you, God, that you're not done with this church yet, that you want us to connect with more people and to grow a community that would be the best that we could possibly ever be. You've given us everything we need to do that right here in this room, Jesus. So help us come up with the ideas. Help us look back and know what we've done, where we've made mistakes. Let's look forward and see where you're calling us to go. Let us look up to you and pray that you will give us direction and that you will be with us and then let us go strong. Only you can.